Hi everybody. Uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Uh, this is the uh, tenth day, so we completed our ten day meditation on the healing power of your breath. So a ten day meditation on specifically uh, focusing on uh, physical and emotional pain. And so. Uh, so before I go into today's uh, webcast, I wanted to uh, say thank you for a few people. So first of all, I want to really uh, thank the TWR Facebook Live team. There's a group of people who has been for now months, has been very actively every single day hours of effort gone into it to able to do this Facebook Live, all volunteer people, volunteering people. And also I wanted to thank um, um, the Umzes, the practice guide, uh, all who have uh, very committed for the last 10 days in very short notice that uh, uh, guiding meditation and uh, many uh, different languages. This is really, really exciting, and uh, and I uh, clearly have a pleasure of uh, opening my Facebook page and getting seeing a guided meditation happening in uh, from all over the world and a different time. So this has been a wonderful experience to watch this happening. So I wanted to again thank you for all the uh, practice guides. And, and also I wanted to thank you people who, <clears throat> who really um, very actively participating and, uh, to our efforts. So people who have been um, really like uh, uh, following the Facebook Live uh, very diligently and, uh, and um, sharing a lot of comments and experiences and supporting other people. So I wanted to thank everybody who participated and very actively. And so just so now as we finish our 10 days um, meditation, I wanted to you know, ask everybody, how was it? <laughs> the, all the uh, Umze guide meditation, how was it for all of you? Uh, guiding the practice, and um, how was all the people who have participated uh, in uh, these ten day meditation? And um, you know, just I think I would love to have some feedback from all of you. Uh, how many of you have uh, participated for ten day every day? How many people have participated? And how many people who you have participated at least and uh, you know few times and um, with the guide practice with the recording and how many of you really felt the benefit you know how was it how was how's your pain I it's uh, always uh, amazing to see people saying that all. Oh, uh, just my 50% of the, my pain is gone. My pain is gone completely. Uh, I pain is not gone, but I feel much easier, more peace with my pain. And uh, first time I slept well. And all those uh, comments are really like uh, what uh, inspires us and uh, what gives us the fuel to uh, continuously do this wonderful service. So uh, I very much wanted to hear back from all of you, so um, please keep on writing feedbacks as it does not interfere anybody, so you just you can make your comments here and uh, and um, I will happy to look at these comments and definitely and it could be also inspiring for all the other people who are watching my teaching but also seeing the responses of the people, the comments of the people, so that is also itself is 
uh, uh, teaching and uh, information. So I strongly recommend to give feedback. Um, let's talk about why. Those, so those all these beautiful comments. Uh, why it worked? Why it worked? I think, of course, apart from the teaching, it's wonderful. But the ancient uh, wisdom tradition, unbroken lineage, and uh, apart from that, I think it has so much to do with your commitment and uh, the connection that you feel toward the teaching, toward me, toward the Cyber Sangha. I think your commitment and your connection is what making these teaching work for you. So now obviously those don't have that uh, level of commitment or that, uh, that depth of connection will be not the same. So basically why it's working for you is your uh, commitment and your connection. So this is, it's so exciting really to see how uh, this internet age, you know, like this, uh, uh, this is what I call sacred cyber sangha. So really like this notion of saber, sacred cyber sangha is, I feel it's really, really important because somehow we all need to connect. Without connection, nothing will work. Without connection, there is no friendship. Without connection, there is no love. Without connection, there is no healing. Without connection, there is no enlightenment. Without connection, there is nothing. So connection matters. But the question, always we can argue about what connection it is. Sometimes people think about losing connection because of the internet. Yes, absolutely, you're right. Because you see three people sitting together around the table and everybody is looking on their phone and 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 trying to search something and look at some email texts and so on that's not good definitely we don't want that but on the other hand the internet is another way of connecting also this is a different way of connecting but i think it's really important to value this kind of connection also i know many of you who are been watching these teachings for uh, a number of, uh, you know, I mean, I know like many of you, we already probably have um, some sense of teacher-student relationship, or at least familiar with my work for the last 15, 20 years. But how often we see each other? It's maybe once, twice a year. And uh, does that, is that good enough? It's better than nothing. But definitely, it is, it can be more. And the more it, it, there's no way I can come to travel that more, or it's not. There's not possible that you can come and travel more to me. But we do not have to do that. So this is another way of we are able to connect. So the cyber sangha connection through the cyber sangha. I think it is really really important. I'm saying that we all kind of know that, but I don't. In some sense, I don't think we know the value of these. A cyber connections we don't know and we don't use enough and we don't benefit enough from this uh, kind of connection cyber connection cyber sangha relationship cyber uh, teaching uh, cyber meditation and so on so i think i wanted to acknowledge the value of it now on the other hand sometime of course there might some of you might be feeling well yes i understand it's a valuable but that's not enough. We really wanted to connect more with people to people, heart to heart, in person, talking, looking at directly to each other's eye, connecting with each other, hearing each other's voice in person. I absolutely understanding understand that. I do feel the power of that, need of that. So that's why I wanted to talk a little bit about the local Sangha also. And uh, I have uh, asked... Uh, all our international local Sangha, because we have uh, many centers around the world and, uh, and there are many uh, great uh, practitioners around the world. There are uh, people who have been following teaching for many, many years and people who are also helping other people in their whatever their capacity is in many different ways people are helping. So we do have a lot of uh, places, we do have a lot of people who teaches 
and uh, we and these places are very active, engaged, and these people are also very committed. So we do have. So I thought maybe today is a time to introduce a little bit also a local sangha because we have been talking about a cyber sangha for a long time. So because as end of this ten day meditation, I wanted to emphasize. So I ask uh, our uh, the organizers from all around the world, uh, from different countries, please do presence during this uh, Facebook Live. And I have requested them a few days ago, as I can see now, Ligmicha Mexico, Ligmicha Colombia, Ligmicha Germany, and then I think uh, it, it's not that we are trying to promote these things. I think I, I think cyber sangha, sangha is equally important the local sangha local sangha is equally important the cyber sangha it's a very much question of each individual's need if your need is fulfilled completely that's all what it matters but if your need is not fulfilled somehow it's in some sense so we need to find some way to fulfill your need spiritual need your need for your support for practices uh, either it's a teaching, it's a schedule of meditation, or it's a, like a mentor or group practices, whatever it is, that somehow we need to find a solution. That's, it's, it's like a, this is what reason why I'm talking about local Sangha. It's if there is a need, there is a support. So I, I have asked many of these places, they have regularly uh, meditation, a weekly basis meditation in some places, a couple of times meditation uh, each of these places. So I am asking all the um, the organizers uh, to please uh, give the Facebook page link here as I'm speaking, the web page link there as a, a different city. Uh, if there is a group practices, please give the link here. If, if if anybody is kind of having some personal kind of support that I want everybody Sangha to connect with each other, probably uh, in one city that you are listening and maybe five, ten people are listening, but none of you know each other. Or in one city there's two people are listening, feeling very, very lonely that you don't have any support. But but maybe there is somebody listening right next, 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 a mile away from you. But this is, this communication is the way to you two connect to, together with each other, a, a way to connect with the practice group there. So, so I would strongly recommend to uh, participate, be active here, sharing your information and connecting with each other to support each other. Um, so, and then of course there are sometimes situations and cases where there are there are no no one there. You're maybe truly you're alone. And uh, and truly you're feeling lonely, but again, uh, because of the uh, cyber uh, sangha, because of the regularly uh, Facebook live teaching and meditation, you do not need to feel that you are supported. I come to your room. I'm traveling with you in your cafe, everywhere you are traveling. I'm with your airport. I'm I'm there right right in front of you, right with you. So. There's no need to feel that sense of lonely. But in case if you do want to feel like a need a person to have a community or something like that, then if there is not one, you could be the one who can create one. Not only five years ago, when I first time came here, there was a nothing. Even the and even the burn was not here much. And sometime when it's here, unfortunately, it's some sense of a negative, negative and. A, uh, undermine comments and even people, some teachers, even practitioners and uh, people who think about compassion and openness and tolerance, even from them uh, there's a word of uh, undermining words and people like that. So so it was nothing was there. But today there are a lot of uh, information, practices, it came out of nothing. So if you're alone, you could be the one who can start the practice group and of course uh, if there is that interest and you always uh, uh, you're welcome to communicate with Ligmita International Board and uh, at the ligmita.org uh, that is the email that you can communicate and see 
how um, that we can support you to to do that. So again, uh, so that's the lingmicha.org. Uh, you are welcome to communicate and to help you. So now. This, as this whole uh, 10 days meditation and a teaching has been the healing power of your breath, so uh, definitely uh, I always think about a breath as a med uh, medicine, meditation as a medicine. So clearly awareness as a med medicine, wisdom as a medicine. So these all are definitely, it's like a medicine, can be used as a medicine, will help as a medicine also, uh, similar to medicine. So, so, so breath, like as a medicine, so I wanted to maybe speak a little bit today about the, the healing power of your breath. Now, when we think about the breath, of course, immediately comes in mind is this, this is it, right? This is what you're breathing. Um, in the room, the window is open, the air is coming in and out, it keeps the room fresh. Um, in your body, the air is moving in and out and uh, giving you oxygen. Even in your brain, air is moving in and out and giving you oxygen, oxygen and so on. So these are like a air, uh, these are like a breathing that we, it's, you can call, call and you can think about this as a, a rhythmic breath. There's a rhythm to it. There's a sense of a rhythmic breath, you can call it. And uh, and then you can think about like a non-rhythmic breath, the breath that you can, um, you know, when, when it gets subtler and subtler, uh, and the breath, it gets easier, easier, and more effortless, and to go to the point of the so subtle that you don't, Nobody hears that you are breathing. Maybe even to the point you are so subtle, subtly breathing that you don't even hear that you are breathing. So it's not so much of uh, almost like a rhythmless, almost like a subtle. Uh, you don't hear it, you can, but you're still the breath is happening. But then you go to non-rhythmic breath in a sense of like a, the, the the awareness, the awareness, the mind. Uh, the connections, the, the universe is breathing. The universe is breathing. The plants are breathing. Uh, every sing, every cell in your body is breathing. Your heart is breathing. Your lung is breathing. Your kidney is breathing. And everybody who is breathing, the breath is there. The life force is there. It stays alive. When the breath stops, when the vitality stops, it starts to decline its uh, forces and it become, began to die. So, so breath is very much like what keeps us alive and uh, give, gives us a strength. So in a sense of like a non-rhythmic breath, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Now, um, in the earlier one of my teachings, I think we talk about nine winds and uh, we talk about uh, uh, these notion of nine winds it's coming from one of the very ancient uh, and very important uh, uh, tantric texts uh, called maju sangje jusum in tibetan it's a three great tantras mother tantras in the Bion tradition and uh, so in in that tradition there is there is a whole uh, explanation and a knowledge about nine winds so we talked a little bit about that i don't want to do go into that nine bre uh, bre breathings or the nine winds, but I would like to talk a little bit more simpler version of that. So think about this. Uh, let's, let's think about um, like five different levels, okay? The level one will be like a conceptual breath, conceptual breath. So for example, right this very moment, if you look inward yourself, what kind of, what is happening in you? Is your conceptual mind is very active? That, mean, that means, are you thinking a lot? 
more than your feeling, more than you're experiencing your breath. For sure, very minimum, minimum less awareness, but the mind is thinking, 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 thinking. If that, when there is a lot of conceptual activity, very narrow conceptual activity, very limited optional options of conceptual activity, so there is no space, there is no air, there is no breath. It con and contracts, it contracts you. So you think about that's like a conceptual breath. So that, if you look at yourself, that very moment, your breathing cycle. Your breathing cycle and your active conceptual conceptual thoughts and confusion. Look at the association there. There is clearly linked association, but it's not so much fun, right? It's not so much fun. And you're not breathing well. But there is clearly that concept, your breath, and the wind of that concept, conceptual wind. In Tibetan we say, yi chi talung, yi chi talung. That winds are associated. Let's go to the next, next step. Emotional breath. Uh, so those you who are experiencing a lot of emotional, like a fear, anxiety, uh, like a anger, jealousy. Think about it. The moment your emotions are very active, you are feeling so much emotion, so strong emotion. That very moment, watch your breath. Your breath is directly affected by those emotion. Those emotion has unique characteristic of wind. It's called nyomombi tsublung, emotional wind. This is emotional wind. That wind is affecting your breath, and your breath is probably affecting about amount of oxygen or kind of oxygen, probably, which is difficult to say in theory, a kind of energy that you are breathing in, it's not a high quality, not a good quality. So it's affecting your body, it's affecting your mind, it's affecting your mood, it's affecting your view of the world, it's affecting your uh, sense of self, it's affecting your decision, it's affecting every aspect of yourself, for example. So, so what does this mean? So that means you are having emotional breath. So conceptual breath or breathing, emotional breathing. Or let's talk about the third one, better one, a resting breath. Okay, resting breath. So the resting breath is more resting in a sense resting from negativity, resting from the conceptual activity, uh, resting from the effort, uh, resting from the emotional winds or effort. Breath of resting. So for now, those you are, are listening to me, bring your attention to your body, bring your attention to your speech, bring your attention to your mind, and practice of the three door, that means the stillness in your body, feel that. Rest in that stillness as I'm speaking. Rest in your silence. Feel the silence. 
connect with that silence. Be aware of the spaciousness of your mind, the openness of your mind. So, be aware of all the three doors, all or eat three precious pills. I say that it's the same thing. Feeling that deep stillness in your body. Feeling that deep silence in your speech. Feeling that wide openness in your heart, in your mind. Right now, you're breathing deep. Your breath is a resting breath. There's a sense of stability, calmness, connectedness, sense of peace, sense of resting, effortless. You're not draining your biological energies. You are protecting, restoring your biological energies. Your psychological energies this breath is very different from the previous two the conceptual breath and emotional breath this is a resting breath let's think about the number four the breath of awareness You are resting, you are connected, you are silence, you are still, you are open, but not necessarily you are fully aware of any of these. That makes whole different. A rock, a mountain, it's still, but it's not self-aware of that stillness. A bulb, a candle, it's illuminated, 
but is not aware of its light. A warmth in the heating in the room, there is a sense of a temperature-wise, there is a warmth, but it's not aware of its warmth. Because lack of awareness, everything makes different. You are, you are different from everything else. You are different from that mountain. You are different from the temperature in the room. You are different from the candle, even crystals. Your unique ability, your unique quality is ability to be conscious, ability to be aware of that stillness, aware of that silence, aware of that light, aware of that warmth. Are you aware this moment? As I'm guiding, as I'm speaking, I want you to be in that meditation state. I invite you all to be aware of that now and feel completely that you are supported by all the Cyber Sangha of friends. You are supporting me and I am supporting you. If I am open to your support, I feel it. If you are open to my support, you feel it. When you feel it, it's helping you. So be open, feel connection. I'm inviting you to be aware of the three doors, aware of that stillness. It's like a, eating your favorite chocolate dessert with rush, with, with, with uh, so much hunger, hunger, so much lack of awareness, you're eating it without being aware. That's one thing. You're eating it, but you're not aware of it. You're not tasting it. Or another example will be you have that, your favorite chocolate in your pocket. You, put, you, you, you have it, but you, you're not tasting it. You're still, you're not aware of it. You have the chocolate, you're not tasting it. There's a difference between possessing and tasting. Taste the stillness. Taste the silence. The moment you taste the silence, it immediately impacts you. You feel much deeper sense of peace. Your body immediately responds differently. Your stress immediately reduces down. It immediately clears your pain or begins to clear your pain. It's like immediately begin to stop your draining. So let's, if you're, if you're draining yourself very fast, the moment you are aware of that silence and resting in that silence, connected with that silence, immediately speed of the draining stops or slow downs completely. So what I'm saying here is be aware of the silence. Feel the power of being aware of the silence. In, a, in Dzogchen teaching, it says, Jume Yishe, Jutu Mepi Yishe.
the wisdom of silence is the awareness which is aware of the silence that awareness is the wisdom of silence which is aware of the silence which in this moment probably you're having glimpse of experience of being aware of that silence being aware of that stillness being aware of that spaciousness not only possessing but you're being aware of it connected to it continuously be aware and continuously feel the differences be between being aware or just being aware or just being still being aware of the stillness or just being still being aware of the silence or just being silent being aware of the spaciousness or just being open feel the difference see the different realize the differences continue This stillness is not only in you. You can expand that you are surrounding to others in around the world. In the Cyber Sangha, feel this collective sense of stillness, connectedness. Feel this collective sense of silence. We definitely need this collective silence this moment in the world. Feel this, the spaciousness expands from you to your environment to others around the world. Space expands. There is an unbounded collective stillness awareness of that stillness, unbounded collective sense of silence and awareness of that silence. Unbounded collective sense of spaciousness and awareness of that spaciousness. Now your breath is completely different. Is the breath of awareness. In Tibetan we say Rikpi Ranglung. The breath of self-awareness. The breath breathing that you are doing, the breath that you have is like a medicine. What you're breathing in it's like a medicine. What you're breathing out, it's clearing things from your system. Your toxics is releasing, clearing. It's your breath. It's your breath of awareness. It's your healing breath. It's you have it all the time. You can access it whenever you want whenever you need. Trust that.
Now, some of you are feeling very deep, deep to the point, the stillness and awareness, there is no separation. The silence and the awareness of the silence, there is no separation. The spaciousness, the boundlessness, the sacred space and the awareness of that sacred space, there is no separation. There is only oneness. It's like a unified field, inseparable state. This is like the highest wind, the highest the breath, highest energy field. Connection of non-duality, a oneness. In our teachings, we say, Pyunyiji Yinglung. The essence of burn, burn, the winds of burn essence. Okay, now you can open your eye and continuously uh, trying to keep that same deep rhythm of breath and feel the same, the healing quality continuously you're receiving individually, collectively. Allow that energy, the wind to continuously flow through you so, so how was the meditation? So I would like to uh, hear your feedback. So, uh, what? How was your understanding about the 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 explanation, and how was your experiences of the practice, and what did you feel? Did you feel from these five different stages where conceptual breath? Very, very specific characteristic is very, very uh, a specific one, and you can probably see you are more into one kind of air and the, the breath than the other one. Those you are very emotional, you can see how how commonly, how frequently your emotional breath is very active, and those you are kind of more like a earthy individuals, more like a. Um, naturally more connected, you have more that sense of resting breath, not necessarily breath of awareness. Whenever you are uh, good days, whenever you are guided, when you, whenever you are uh, more connected, you have more awareness, breath of awareness, that you are more conscious, regardless of it's a joy, it's a pain, doesn't matter. The awareness does not distinguish you're happy or not. And awareness is equally important case of being happy or sad. In some cases, even when you are sad, when you are in conflict, it's more important to be aware than when you are not in. So awareness has a role, a benefit all the time, every situation. And then the last one, the breath of this unified field of sense of breath, where that Aware, not, not only there is awareness, but the awareness is so deep that it becomes one with what you are aware of. There is a no sense of separation between the subject and object. And we say, Nyinzin Tawa, like a non-dual. So it's kind of beyond. So ability to rest in that, in a deep sense of meditation, it's, it's also possible there. So you can see uh, the conceptual breath, emotional breath, resting breath, breath of awareness, breath of unified field, breath of unity or, or inseparable, so the fifth one. So these are very, very, I think in a simple way to understand, you can try to look at that way. They are, it means the same thing, that explanation 
as in the nine 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 winds. So so that's all. I think uh, uh, we are running out of time. And uh, again, I encourage all of you to give me feedback, comments back, uh, because uh, when we are in the big hall, a couple of hundred people sitting together, uh, each one of you don't have a chance to ask the question or make a comment or, or hear your experiences, but because it always kind of takes more time, extra time, and, and it's a different space in, in this case, Whatever you wanted to make a comment on and you share your experiences, it does not, not interfering anybody. Rather, it's somehow it's like a supporting other people. So welcome to continuously do that as even when we finish this, uh, continuously watch, uh, watch um, these practices and uh, give comments. And so we will, we will continue. So this is it. Thank you again, once again, uh, TWR Facebook Live team all the Lingmita Sangha organizers, all the Undis people who guided the practice and every participants and everybody who have uh, liked the page and the kind of, I know like uh, the number has been increasing quite a bit, uh, activity in this Facebook page. And um, so um, uh, who have liked the page, who have made comments on it, who have particularly who have shared, uh, shared this uh, these teachings with other people and uh, this is in a way it's a wonderful to do it because uh, when you're sharing it you're not kind of pushing anybody to do what you do uh, but you are sharing it it's in in case somebody do want to do what 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 is more significant meaningful for you that that can be a uh, life changing um uh, support in whatever people are going through challenges and and up to people to follow or not follow. But somehow we all become a door for somebody in some ways. So that taking that opportunity is, I think it's always wonderful. This is what I try to do, take use of of this Facebook uh, means to able to do that. So, so we will um, now, this coming Saturday, we have a, um, a conversation with uh, Professor David Presley, uh, um, from the University of Berkeley here, and uh, he's a, a great uh, scientist, uh, uh, neuroscience, and so uh, we will we'll be talking a little bit about meditation and neuroscience, and particularly a little bit more on uh, a sleep and the meditation. And uh, I, I, I'm looking forward. So I hope that uh, all who you are interested in these. Uh, dialogue between the science and the meditation and spirituality. Welcome and let other people know who might be interested in too. And then after that, we are right now um, uh, planning, uh, organizing uh, with the team to what, what will be our next uh, Facebook Live topic. And the topic is defined already. We will be talking on a sleep yoga practice. Um, uh, and but we will try to really engage everybody into uh, practices of the sleep yoga, at least trying to sleep more. Uh, I think many, many people need to, to sleep more, need to, to sleep better, need to, to uh, you know, so uh, for the well-being of your health, well-being of your mind, for many reasons, uh, and of course, for for the your meditation and practice so so we will i'm very excited about um continue so we all the details will be on twr facebook and uh, and also with all the other web pages and uh, uh, information will be there so keep keep on keep keep on watching uh, seeing the update of information when when and schedule will be so thank you very much everybody Love you all. Bye.